Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is that time of week where we have a guest join us, coming to us live from an undisclosed location because it do kind of look like he hiding from somebody. Uh, the best college football writer in America. Check him out at Channel 6, Spencer Hall. What's going on? Oh, nothing much. Yes, undisclosed location somewhere in the American Southwest. <laughs> it could where, be anywhere. By the way, some stuff still closed, but the nation doesn't cooperate. <laughs> If you come out here, they're like, nah, eight feet of snow. Sorry, come back in a month. <laughs> You're like, what do you mean eight feet of snow? Y'all do that here? Yeah, yeah, no, they do that. That's a real thing. It was April 1st last night, Bo, and my Atlanta, Georgia dwelling ass walked out and there were snow flurries. And I was like, nah. nah. <laughs> April Fool's brought to you by the Cosmos. April Fool's. Me. <laughs> all right. So for people who don't know this, I tell people this all the time. We may even be using it for some of our promotional material for this episode. But one of my favorite pictures of all time is me and Spencer at South by Southwest. And I got a t-shirt on with a black fist with a red, black, and green wristband on. And Spencer next to me with a Dolly Parton t-shirt on. And I like tweaked it up on Instagram. And it looks really striking and a portrait of what America could be if we would stop tripping. But Mm -hmm. it is part of the reason why we are doing this here episode because Beyonce put out an album that at least we thought was going to be a country music album. And I said to myself, the only way I'm going to talk about this is with Spencer because there's so much to try to do. This is a very difficult task, not to mention the fact it's crazy people. We, we are beset on all sides by crazy people on this time, in part because like Beyonce got her crazy people. But then it's going to be some crazy white people just because because we're kind of dabbling and going in lanes. Mm-hmm. And I just I, I got you like you got me. You know what I'm saying? Like we in this yeah. we in this together to try to have a, a emotional yet intellectual yet fun loving yet critical discussion of what was at least before it came out. One of the most fascinating records I could ever conceive of. They told us Beyonce was putting out a country music album. And then she said it wasn't a country album. It was a Beyonce album. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Like, like, what what, what are we getting here? (laughs) You know? And and, and then we got this album. And I don't even know how to start or where to go. But I feel like I'm going to let you go first. So when this came out, I thought, okay, we're actually going to get... What what are we going to get? Are you going to get somebody who's going to try to make a country album all right you're gonna do a country album the classic example of this is uh ray charles modern sounds and country and western um i think i have the title right there this is an album where ray was like i'm gonna do a country album better than a country art and ray did it is a classic album in american music it's a monster that's not what she did all right because i didn't think she was going to aim i don't think we were going to get daddy lessons right because daddy lessons is like the first sort of peak at Beyonce doing this, okay, and an idea that, and, and by the way, demonstration that she could do it, okay. Yes, Daddy Lessons, fine. It's also like most great Beyonce songs. It's got stomp, like that's that's to me. If you can stomp on the two and the four, that to me is like the definition of a Beyonce song. So it was proof of concept that she could do it. And then she said it's a Beyonce album. So, Bo, what I want to ask is this: What is this? What it what, what is it? Because I have like nine answers on what it ended up being. Yes, and they include, and I will just throw out because uh, again, you got me and I got you. All of these, I'm going to tell you, all of these are insane answers. Okay, <laughs> but I don't think they're wrong. <laughs> there is a country album in here. Yes, you'd have to skinny cut it because this is what 27 tracks total. If you include 27. the interlude. 27 is 27 tracks. Which, by the way, if you release an album and there are 27 tracks, do you know what I think? Ah, this is the second Wu-Tang album. Ah, this is the White (laughs) Album, right? You give me 27 tracks and I'm going to go, we we got a little high on our own supply, did we? We we spent a little too long in the studio because we had all that money. We had, and by the way, it all sounds real expensive. Yes, it does. All of it. It does. I love that. It's good to my ears, if not to my brain sometimes, but (laughs) I think it's that. I think it's got the sprawl and the confusion of like the white album. I think that's definitely there when I go, oh, Beyonce, if you want a testament to her genius, okay, is this. A lot of things on this album don't work, but she managed to have a four-way 
personality split in a band with creative differences when she's just one person. This yes. Is, this sounds like an album where she's having creative differences with herself. All right. Which is, again, I think it's a backhanded compliment when you go, <laughs> you're so good, you can argue with yourself. You didn't even know what the like three or four geniuses in your head were doing. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I go from where you start to where I go here, which is I'm not exactly sure where we ended up, but I have a theory on how we got here. Okay. I could be wrong. I'm not operating from information here because quite honestly, nobody's going to risk their lives to tell us what the fuck is going on with the Beyonce record. I can only imagine right. what that NDA look like. I just feel like it has maybe the words Draco, Sharia. Mm -hmm. It's like something <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you it's know what it be... sounds like? It sounds like it sounds like her versus to Jolene. That's what it yes. sounds like. Yes. Yeah. You know, it sounds like consequences and repercussions. Like, like this is like this is the opposite of us with the terms of services, where we just click it and be like, oh well, whatever. We'll just take what you get on that. I think people just click the term of services on hers and no, I better not say anything to anybody at all. Like that's that's the safest mm -hmm. thing, the safest play that I could make, right? So you're not going to convince me that an album called Cowboy Carter, where all the imagery that you gave me was of her on a horse with that, mm -hmm. long, that long wig, blonde going down her back, right? And the Stetson hat and the American flag. You're not going to tell me for a second where the first two singles are the Texas Hold'em joint and mm -hmm. uh, the 16 Carriages, okay? Correct. You're not going to tell me for a moment that the original plan here was not to make a country music album. You're just, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to make me believe that because otherwise that shit doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. Like to say that it is this album with some country elements of it, if your imaging is going to be so over the top country, then now we're at a disjointed place, right? And I do believe right. because of the amazing way she nailed it the last three times out with the execution of concepts that. Yo, you do have to answer for the imaging that you put out on this record because we gave you all the credit for the imagery on all the other stuff, right? You mm -hmm. you do. You do have to take some credit. And honestly, that imagery does not match this album because I think they got in there and started working on that country music album and that shit was a lot harder than they thought it was going to be, right? Like, Texas Hold'em is a country song. You're not going to, like, it, right. it may, Hit Boy may have been the one that did the beat, but come on, man. That's a country record. Uh, the 16 hey, wait, 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 wait. By the way, Good job, Hit Boy. Like, yeah, yeah, well, that's like respect. Well done. Well done, right? Yeah. Well done. Um, it was a country record. It just didn't work out that way, right? I think another thing mm -hmm. happened, which you just pointed out. You guys might have had a little bit too much time. They said they started working mm -hmm. on this like five years ago, right? And what's going to happen yeah. invariably with five years to make a record, you're going to take too long and somehow not have enough time. Because right. I'm going to tell you something that I don't think you know yet. I got my Ooh. copy of Cowboy Carter on vinyl mm -hmm. in the mail, okay? And one of the great things about getting a al physical album is mm -hmm. you get all the material, you get liner notes, you get everything else, right? Yeah. Uh-uh. Not this time. Hmm. Now, the only writing I recall seeing on that record, I almost want to get up and bring it back, was on the back where it says executive producer Beyonce Giselle Knowles Carter, okay? There are no liner notes on the inside, no lyrics, nothing like that. There is a QR code. And when you put the QR code in, it takes you to Beyonce.com, and it's only got credits for Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages. That's it. The vinyl copy does not have any of the Linda Martell songs, right? The Anything that had Linda Martell's voice on it is not on the vinyl copy. And Yaya is not on there, which to me, grave error. Except I don't think it's an error. Those things seem to have been done late. Like, it sounds like they got all the way to the end of this and they were still going and they couldn't figure out what exactly it was that they had. So then I feel like the press release comes out or whether a Beyonce release comes out, it ain't a country album, it's a Beyonce album because we got to figure out what to call this now. Right. I don't think they had like some good stuff, but they didn't quite have enough country, but they figured out how to put all this stuff together. And it is all over the place. Like the White Album is a great comparison, but it's almost like the stuff is a little too similar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to be the sprawling disjointed record, it's almost just a little too similar. But I, I can't think of any time anybody ever put out 80 minutes worth of music and didn't call it a double album. That's how I know. That by the time mm -hmm. they got to the end, they were just like, yeah, le yeah, okay, cool. Just, just go ahead and do that, and it all stands. But that's a separate discussion from we have songs, right? 
Because most right. people are probably not going to think about the record in the way that I think about it in that. Like, as somebody, I think you and I both look at it as, hey, we're kind of nerds about this, but also people who right. create things. And you know what it is to try to execute everything on right. a creation. And we're looking at that like, oh, that was a little shaky. This didn't go you like you tell, thought it would. You could tell it, like, for instance, if you want to know, listener, viewer, what one of these is. Okay. Bunch of stuff. Sprawl. Big ass concept. Not really sure where all the paragraphs are going. Like an essay <laughs> that you had to write in school where you go, paragraph nine was written by an entirely different person. I don't know who put this on paper, but it has nothing <laughs> to do with paragraph one. There are two framing songs at either end of the album, which lets me know that we got through this AP English exam and we got to the end of the essay and we went, oh no, I don't have a real coherent <laughs> thought here. So I'm just going to put two bookends in here and squish it. And, and listen, from one exam hustler to another, Beyonce, well done. Okay. Because yes. one, I don't think they fit. But two, you know, they're professional. They're well executed. They sound great. They don't mean much. I don't get an overarching theme because I don't think there was one. I just think at the end, she's like, no, no, no. I'll just put these between two slices of bread and call it a sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it started with a theme. If that ain't if that ain't country, I don't know what is. That's how I know you're not gonna tell me that you mm -hmm. did not plan to make a country record. But at another point, in the words of the great philosopher Takeoff, she went back to ratchet. That cute shit wasn't working. It just wasn't quite curling over like they thought it would. I can also say this, going back to your point that the branding to me, and not just the branding, okay? Because we could say that, like, oh, it's a Beyonce album. She wins that argument. The actual personnel listed here on callouts, you do not enlist the services of one Willie Nelson and one Dolly Parton if one is not aiming at a certain target. Okay. <laughs> yes. You and don't. by the way, Willie. Not those two. Not those two. It felt, and it was so calculating, right? Like calculating it away from like, oh, no, no, we're not going to do this. Where Willie Nelson being like, sometimes you just need somebody to trust to tell you it's some cool shit. Like, oh, don't you gave the game away you just gave mm -hmm. the game away right here you, you gave the game away with the dolly like no we don't need to get his game away we didn't need that just roll with it yeah it's not clear if i was gonna say that okay for anyone listening to this who's like oh, that's unfair or i love beyonce and you're pissing me off let me tell you i like beyonce too i don't think it's real focus and i no. think anyone listening to it would have to agree and if you have one big argument i go 27 tracks 27 <laughs> tracks if you had managed to maintain a singular focus over 27 tracks the entire time you would achieve something that like no one else has done no one i don't yes. care it like it's it's so long and it's so diffuse and it's very interesting to me because there is a country album if you skinny cut it like this is now the entertainment and this is by the way how i know that it's an unfocused thing where they i think they missed whatever mark they were aiming at because there is a country album if you start cutting it we're going to have these playful edits where we go through and go okay the actual Cowboy Carter album is these seven tracks, right? Or these eight tracks. Uh, and then there's this other stuff that's like, I think she does something very interesting. We can talk about this. I think she does something very interesting toward the second half of the record where I think she hit on something and for like three or four songs and they just ran out of time. By the way, why you run out of time when you were Beyonce? This, you're an industrial complex all by yourself. Yeah. The Beyonce industrial complex moves with a lot of money a lot of weight and at one point the me project becomes a we project and that's when you start running out of time because you go yep. oh there's a record company attached and there's m so many producers attached and so many musicians and so much crediting i think that's why the credits and everything got rushed because at the end they did run out of time because producing an album like this 27 tracks you didn't do this on a macbook somewhere in a cabin in northern <laughs> wisconsin like your bon iver right or right there uh you you did it in in the factory and the factory requires workers and at one point the quarterlies come up and they go hey we got a due date y'all need yes. to get ass moving yes but i tell you this it's got jams i will go through what i say yep. oh we got jams here right i think the 16 carriages joint is a is it's a different kind of jam obviously but i think that one is really good right i think that one's heat the bodyguard joint i don't fully know how i feel about it in every way and i am yeah. assuming that that's rafael sadiq on the base based on what i can glean from the credits because mm -hmm. it's a million names on it's been produced by rafael sadiq and i'm assuming that rafael sadiq is playing the bass or whatever it is that he produces and he he kills it and that's the one track that the vinyl version i felt gave me a much different feel than the digital version because the mm -hmm. vocals didn't come in as hot i felt like on the vinyl as it did on the digital and they're fucking perfect 
perfect. Like the whole vibe on it. And she wants mm-hmm. you to know, by the way, I went through and looked at credits from the last three albums. She wants you to know that she does her own vocal production because she is listed as the vocal producer on every song on all those albums. She wants you to know, ain't nobody telling her how to jump on these tracks. And she jumped on that one. Perfect. Just perfect. So yeah, let's just give the blanket compliment to the entire record. The vocal arrangements are nuts. Like I haven't yeah. really, I haven't thought about this in a non Beyonce context since, since listening to like a Janet Jackson record where you go, how many tracks did you put down? How right. did you put this together? Like vocally, it's an incredible record and the can't sing her ass off allegations cannot be denied. No, yeah, correct. Uh, the spaghetti joint, I don't like rapping Beyonce personally. That joint mm-hmm. bangs. Bangs, I tell you, bangs, mm-hmm. and it's not on the vinyl because it's one of the Linda Martell joints. The 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 Miley Cyrus one, yeah. How how okay? How, how do you feel about how do you feel about Miley and Beyonce together? I say, how do we feel? Here, here's my question mm-hmm. because Beyonce did the vocal production. Mm-hmm. How what what role did Ego play in the vocal production on doing the song with Miley Cyrus? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if Beyonce's plan was I'm gonna get by here and go toe to toe with Miley Cyrus, my question then would be, what is Plan B? Because Plan A might not be the plan. And look. Miley Cyrus is an idea to me, right? I ain't watched mm-hmm. none of that Nickelodeon stuff or whatever. I had never listened to her music. I knew who she was, like party in the USA, whatever. Man, at the 40th, I think, 40th anniversary of Saturday Night Live, they had her perform, and I think she was doing his covers album, and she got up there, and she sang Paul Simon's 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, and I was like, oh, my oh, Jesus. You're like, I'm in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> you She are, is one of those people who when, when she... When she opens her mouth, you're like, "Oh, we're in trouble!" Like she's gonna do, <laughs> she's gonna do whatever she wants to do with us because she's been doing this longer than I know and better than I know. Uh, yeah. Miley against her, it's interesting because on a country song, you can't smoke more cigarettes than Miley Cyrus. Like you can't sound like she's 31 and she sounds like she's 50, <laughs> yes. which I love. It's the Greg Allman effect where you go, "How does this young person sound like they have been through so much?" <laughs> and, <laughs> And in Miley's case, I think that's because she has. But additionally, it's because she has been singing for as long as Beyonce, maybe longer and definitely in this genre longer. And there's a video. If you want to go look at it, go just Miley Cyrus Jolene. Go look at it. Okay, she's a teen and she's singing Jolene and it sounds like she's had her heart broken. So putting yourself up against her in this context is bold. I don't think there's a won or lost thing. The most interesting thing to me is this. Their voices aren't that far off. I was talking with with Holly about this. Their voices aren't that far, far off in terms of timber and yet they play together. It's a it's a wonderful song. I think it's one of the better songs on the album. Um, I, I think it was indicative of what this album could have been if they had steered straight into, okay, we're we're aiming at this target and we're absolutely going to hit it rather than trying to either reinvent the genre or do something entirely different. Yeah, like it was delightful, right? Yeah. Like, I, like yeah, it was cool. enjoyable and I felt like, me and my man were talking about this, that a lot of this album, rather than feeling intentional, feels calculated. And you can kind yeah. of imagine the video here of them holding hands, or you can imagine the award show performance where they do this together. And it's done in such a way that is like bringing in the crew, right? Like, hey, it's Miley, yeah. it's Miley, it's Beyonce. Oh, and they like each other. I kind of would have mm-hmm. liked to see a little, a little banter, right? Like a little back and forth. Like mm-hmm. this could have turned out like Michael Jackson's vision of bad i can't remember if i talked about this here or somewhere else but have you ever heard prince tell the story about him telling mike that they weren't gonna do bad together no so people don't realize it that the video with wesley snipes in the bad video it was supposed mm-hmm. to be prince and it was basically going to be them going back and forth like i'm bad no i'm bad now of course whoever yeah. thought that this was an idea that prince would go with i don't think they had been paying very much attention he wouldn't even saying we are the world with you motherfuckers i'd have no under- <laughs> no idea if he was <laughs> he, he, he wasn't why, coming why why do i think i'm more special than the world right yeah. he's not he wasn't coming over there for them starving ethiopians he really wasn't coming over here just because you got a lead single right and so prince is telling i think it's the chris rock show and prince is said they come to bring the lies to him and he said i'm going through the song and the first line is your butt is mine and i'm like see 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 we got a problem that's that's where we got a problem this one who's right there. who's gonna yeah who's gonna be singing this line because i'm not singing this to you and you are definitely not singing that to me right <laughs> i so, would have lo- <laughs> on that note on that note 
let's go ahead. Now, when I say these things about country, I'm not telling you that's exactly what it has to be. I'm just telling you there are trends. And in, and because country music, like any genre, can be a little formulaic. If we were aiming for the country thing, there are two kinds of duets you can do, okay? Between two women, between two women. And one of them, I think, would have been uncomfortable for the current framing of Beyonce's character in song, which is, the boy is mine, a.k.a. does he love you, okay? <laughs> like, that is uh, the, 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 the Reba and I think Linda Martin, I can't remember her name, uh, that song, you... I don't think she was going to do one of those songs because there's already a little bit of that on the album. Yes, okay. Yes. There's already quite a bit of that. And if you want to go back a couple albums, there's definitely a lot of that. <laughs> That's a lot of it. So we He's weren't my- going to do a Becky song with Miley Cyrus. Okay. <laughs> That wasn't happening. Yo, I had not thought if they had had that duet and somehow mm-hmm. we had convinced people that it was over Jay Z. Oh man, that video right no. there. Oh man, <laughs> right. That's to me that that's almost a that's a wrestling level move of let's just steer this into the character. Okay, let's yes. just make this let's just make this work. A shoot, yeah. I don't think they were going to do that, right? So it's a lovely variation. I think they chose a nice little like, hey, you're cool. No, you're cool. Like that's. <laughs> That's great. That's great. It's also fascinating to me. Uh, and, and I think like a nice note. You want a nice note here? Okay. It's nice that both these ladies are still here. They were yes. both like, uh, uh, like, because a good bit of the actually affecting stuff on this is Beyonce talking about when she's unhappy, which by the way, is when country does things best. Country's not great when it's happy. It's not. It could be good. All right. When you could be grateful. Right. But um, is anyone who's listened to, I don't know, Sturgill is anyone who's listened to I think even Casey Musgraves on a more like recent note Casey when she's happy I listen to Casey Musgraves new album and it's great it's fine do you know how many times I'm going to re-listen to it not a lot because you know what Casey Musgraves has done she's figured things out she's happy she's got a nice skin routine (laughs) everything's going well and do you know how interesting I find that yeah it's marginally interesting (laughs) it's like that interesting but when she's like high as hell and and things aren't like things she's like thunderstruck in love or heartbroken. Yeah, that's really interesting. And unfortunately for me, that's what I find really interesting in the song. And I, I think that that both of them, when when Beyonce sings with actual affect on this album, when I think she actually gets to the heart of things and then moves me, which by the way, I will tell you, this album made me cry. Like 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 twice the first time I listened, maybe tear up a little bit. Uh once that I'll take back and once that I won't. And and it's when she's singing about, you know, like she was basically the breadwinner at what 16 yeah for the family 15 or 16 you know and 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 miley cyrus to a lesser extent in in her own family but individually i think also had a juvenile work situation that was not ideal it's just nice they're both here it's nice they're both here and thriving it's a great point like it's a it's a it's a good song it's an interesting song it is again like to me a bit of a calculation but Mm -hmm. it counts to me as no that's a winner like like i see I see. Where, I wish it. this. Yeah. I wish this album just had a few more slappers. Because my next jam is that Yah Yah is a slapper dog. Not to be confused yeah. with a snapper, but it is a can, slapper. It is. And can I go ahead and just plant one little earworm that's ruined uh, a couple of days already? But I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I want you to hear the beat for Yah Yah, and then hear this right about now. The Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. The yep. funk soul brother. It sounds like Rockefeller skank, and I don't yeah. mean that as an as an insult. It's almost a compliment. It is a I don't know juke joint surf music influence jam. I think people think that's a sample. That's not. I believe that's Gary nope. Clark Jr. playing guitar on there, right? It's one of my favorite things. Is when you play something to make it sound like a sample, right? Yes, it's live. Yaya yeah is great, and it's also I think a great. It's what this album I think could have been at its best, which is a combination of an existing thing. A little bit of an Americana homage, and then something Beyonce does better than anyone else, which is the call and response giving orders song. If Beyonce is telling me what to do in a song or making suggestions with a call and response, that's it. There is yes. none better. She's the me, best at that. Let me tell you what Yaya was my reminder of, okay? To put Beyonce in the same sentence with Tina Turner is an insult to Beyonce, not to Tina Turner. Like, that's how cold Beyonce, like, that's that sort of song. When I hear that, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's what we work. Like, to me, that is like it's cool when you get to all the deep artistic stuff, but like Renaissance banged so hard to me because it banged, right? Yeah. Like put her in a place where the reason is that this is supposed to slap. You don't need to show me what a what a great art. Nah, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever it is, man. I'm here for slappers. That joint is a slapper. The Desert Eagle joint that me and you are still waiting to find out who produced it. 
that one with that Larry Graham. Woom, woom, woom. Woom. Yeah. Woo-hoo! That's a slapper. Mm-hmm. It's not long enough. It's not long it's enough. It's not. That's enough. what I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Who after a minute 30 of that was like, nah, nah, nah. We out of there. And boy, let me tell you, it's nasty. Soft kisses on some fat lips. Buzz it open and have like, buzz it open and eat your breakfast. Yeah. We're not playing on this one. No, no, no. This is this is another thing that that she's great at, which is uh which is horny Beyonce. That, yes. That's also like very, very strong. There's like four or five songs on here where you just go, <clears throat> Mr. Carter. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, well done. Well, what I want to know is who writes those, right? And I say that because I can't really tell from the credits all the time. But like, is it a man who writes those? Is it a woman who writes those? Which is to say, like, is there some dude who gets the pleasure of, I'm going to write this song about how Beyonce wants to give it to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's a great job. That's a fantastic job. And it's something that uh, that she nails. It. Just in terms of like, you know, there's just different things that people, that vocalists say that just come across with more conviction. And she is, again, as good or better at that than anyone else. I wanted to point out one thing about Desert Eagle. I suspect Alchemist was a con- consultant on that because Alchemist is the only person I know who will put a minute to a minute and a half of the hottest beat you've ever heard and go, enough. <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> I want four minutes of that. You just made the best beat anyone's ever made. And he's like, nah, you get 45 seconds. No, Ow. just just a touch, just a taste, no. just a taste. Like that one, no. it's the it's the last song of the vinyl on that side, and I'm just like, why, why, why? Okay, this, this. Okay, you're gonna do that to us. That's fine. I think for me, like, I don't love the River Dance joint. Like, I like from Yaya till the end of the record. I like it a lot. Like, I think there's a dope EP. Like my brother said, it's like three or four EPs. I think there's a dope EP from that yeah. in which is about 20 30 minutes right that's why it feels like like a couple albums got jammed together in some ways okay so we're gonna get to spencer's grand theory of this album part two which is one there is the part one is that there's a, like a seven or eight song country album of quality in there right and that that if you'd given it a little more room to breathe and focused it a little bit more i think you would have ended up with a great country album the second is this that there is something that she is doing on those last five to six songs that sounds like her making her own weird country influence kid a right where because there are parts like i was once you take that turn into two hands to heaven uh and river dance there's parts that sound like tom york making an album in a closet in 2005 right i got a little drum machine i got a weird synth and i'm just gonna make it hot there's a little bit of that there which is why like i will ride for tyrant because i think tyrant is something different i think it took her 20 songs to warm up and then over like the last like five tracks she made something which was her own so i think there's two albums there and i think one is this like mutant sort of techno country album that she could have made country influenced album that is the beyonce album that i think she's talking about and then there's this kind of like more traditional country album on the side and i think by sort of hitting both of those you ended up missing the target. You aim for two things yeah. or three things, and you end up missing the one thing. Yeah, it's kind of got two quarterbacks. You got none sort of situation. Tried to do everything in the end, kind of in a way, didn't did nothing. Like I like the way Tyrant sounds. I didn't think it was like spectacularly written, but I like I like how yeah. it sounds. I you know we got some Dolly vocals early in it, and so we can get to that. But we're gonna stop. We're gonna sell some stuff. We're gonna come right back talk more about the Cowboy Call. March is over. But the biggest moments in college basketball tip off the month of April. Be a part of the action on prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And if you stick around for the end of the show, you'll hear picks from our producer, Sean, that could potentially help you win big. Prize picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prize picks slash Bomani. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Mm-hmm. 
This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. How's your social battery right now? Has the mad dash to start the new year both professionally and socially exhausted you? It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially as social gatherings pick up with the nicer weather. How do you take care of your social battery? Is it setting more boundaries to make more time for yourself? Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Therapy can help give you the balance you need in your life to maintain a healthy lifestyle. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bomani today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bomani. Let's talk hydration. You chugging water throughout the day or periodically having a glass? Hydration is really important for a healthy lifestyle. And if you use Liquid IV, which has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, you can hydrate even faster. Liquid IV is super easy to use. Just take a pre-measured packet and pour it into a glass of water, mix it up, and enjoy. You can take it at home before you start your day or take it with you to work or the gym. Plus, with their roster of flavors, which includes my favorite, Lemon Lime, you can easily find the right flavor for you and your taste buds. However you hydrate, grab Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier Sugar-Free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code BOMANI at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code BOMANI at liquidiv.com. All right, so like, I think we largely got through what you and I would both agree are like the jams. We didn't, I think you feel better about that Post Malone shit than I do, because honestly, I just can't uh, get past uh, okay. the idea that it exists. Like, it really bothers me that it exists. So it does bother me that there's Post Malone. It also bothers me that it's pretty good. That's it. Like there's a kind of like sweet, dumb, like willfully dumb country song where you say things like, you know, I wish I was the pocket on your jeans. Like uh, there is, and, and especially in duets that's present. And I thought that's actually like, yes, it is too on the nose. It's also really well executed. So I don't feel great about it being Post Malone for some reason. Post Malone, by the way, I, I don't know why I'm supposed to be mad at him. I just am. That's one of those things where people go, oh, Post Malone sucks. And I'm like, yeah, he does. And then I kind of think about it. I go, I'm not real sure why I'm – like, I think I know why. And I think you're about to say it. Well, I mean, I, my thing about him always is, man, he just did the thing. And this, I'll always give Eminem credit for this because he never did the thing. And the thing is, when any of these white rappers finally get to a point and then somebody come down from the mountain on high and they hand them that acoustic guitar and they say, now it's time for you to achieve your destiny, right? Like, I don't know if they gave an acoustic guitar to Machine Gun Kelly, but he did the same thing. Everlast made that mm -hmm. move. Justin Timberlake, in his own way, tried to do it, except I guess mm -hmm. his lineups had been too fresh before and it was rejected when he tried to take yeah. his ass out to the woods or whatever it is. But, like, I found Post Malone to be so unremarkable as a rapper and then i guess i mean he's doing this thing my problem with him being here is this to me goes into not just the brand of beyonce but the legend of beyonce the mythos of beyonce that she has absolutely built and to and we'll talk more about blackbird in a second but to take all like those young black country singers or those black female country singers and to put them all on the same track that isn't even a country track but you're gonna come out here and do a whole duet with Post Malone, it just feels very calculating. And I don't, I, it does not, for me, it runs counter to what we have seen from her for the last 10 years. Does that make sense? You could, yeah, you got all that money, by the way. You could have had three or four guys in there to do that track, right? You could have steely <laughs> dan this. Yeah. You can't tell me Post Malone's got the best vocal on there. You can't, no, man, right? Like, I, like, I would have liked to see her do something like, I mean, not for that song per se, but like, call George Strait. Call like, you know. Come, come here. Was Chris Stapleton busy? Where was yes. Chris Stapleton? <laughs> yes, yes. Where was Chris Stapleton? This That's is the person I know you could take across the tracks. <laughs> yes. Right? Do you know how much black people love Chris Stapleton? Yeah. Do you know if you and play Tennessee whiskey at a bar that is entirely black people? Do you know what you get? A sing along, yes. a great one. 
No. Was he and busy? Let, and let me tell you what that would have got you. Stacks and stacks of Grammys. It would have gotten you all the Grammys. Like, I know you're not going to call my guy, right? I know my guy Sturgill <sighs> is not the one to call, though. God damn, no. I would have loved to have heard it, right? I no, know I, that's I love not happening. Stur- I love you, Sturgill. You're too damn weird. Okay, yeah. you admit it. Listen, you know when Sturgill was out? <laughs> Stur- when Sturgill, like, on a record, opened a record by being like, yeah, I do hallucinogens. CMAs yes. were never calling you. Yes. Never. Look. The man's done, and, and for Beyonce, the man's done three bluegrass albums in a row. Like, this is three. <laughs> this is and they not, bang. They, they bang. knock. They bang. All three of them bang. All of them. That man needs two minutes and 20 seconds to make you weep. Yes. Okay? Yes. Like, you haven't in years. And she didn't call him. She wasn't calling him. She didn't call, she didn't call what I would call the Costco Sturgill, which is Chris Stapleton. Yes. No offense. Costco's great. <laughs> okay, but they're for the masses. They're for the people. I can take Stapleton places that Sturgill can't go. And you didn't call him. You didn't call George Strait, right? Yeah. Like, like he's – were they all busy for five years? I'm just sitting here doing <laughs> fantasy pairings in my head going, hey, hey, let me go super basic. You didn't call like like Luke Combs, right? Yeah. You didn't call – you didn't call these – like <sighs> – like that, that to me is like, that. that's why I'm like, I don't know if you had to be this calculated. I don't know if, you know, like what was – what was the hurry? Was this the best option? It's still a good song. And it's to me, I think one of the better when you go things that fit in country. OK, if that's what you were aiming for. And I think you and I both agree that's what you were aiming for. And then you kind of missed and we had to reframe. If that's what you were aiming for, there is a great tradition in country of having these like goofy songs and they hit it real well. Another thing, by the way, that I that I thought would have fit real well is that when you talk about heartbreak or when you talk about how you really feel, country has this great counterintuitive thing where you are saying one thing and you very obviously mean the other thing. Walking After Midnight. You ever listen to Walking After Midnight? Happy, mm. go lucky, skipping song. I go out walking after midnight, searching for you, right? I see. You, I stop to see a weeping willow. It's crying on his pillow. Maybe he's crying for me. Hello Walls by Willie Nelson, where you go, where your life sucks, right? You got <laughs> nobody. You, you've been drinking. You're broke, right? You wake up and go, hello, Walls. And the walls sing back to you, hello. Like that's, there's a lot of that kind of humor. And she has a little bit of that, by the way. The intro to Yaya is hilarious. Yes. The intro to Yaya is like great. But I feel like we miss these kind of things that like they almost hit on on that Post Malone track, which is again, still pretty good. It's not bad. It's just like, there's some mind boggling decisions here. Like after 10 years of nailing it on all these solo albums, right? Where every decision was perfect. Every A&R call was perfect. Every video you decided to do, everything was perfect. There were moves that just made me be like, whose idea was this? Blackbird. And by the way, as we talk about the things that are expensive, you got a Blackbird cover, you have an interpolation of good vibrations, which is kind of unnecessary, but I assure you cost a lot of money. It's a lot of things that cost a lot of money, but to, to just do a version of Blackbird, like it's just a version. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't think that there was any, I didn't see where the push was on it. Like I, I, that was again, that was a very interesting call that I don't think I would have made. I am not. I will tell you, I'm not the person to ask about this because I generally think covers are a waste of time. Okay, really, I do. I think, co- yeah, I don't really know, especially, and I say this because I don't think most people do a whole lot with them, right? I don't think most people push them. I don't think most people. If you just want to do Blackbird, which, by the way, they did perfectly. You cannot do a better knock on note for note Blackbird by arrangement, by execution. Uh, and it, by the way, by calculation, because it is a beautiful statement when you yes. take, you know, what it is in aggregate. Um, I will say right fast, to- though, I've got a buddy mm-hmm. that is adamant. He does not believe he believes that Paul McCartney just came up with this interpretation that this is a song dedicated to black women. He does not you believe it whatsoever. It? My God, Brock is not trying to hear it. He's not there. And then, and yeah. people go back and have a no, I talked to Paul about it. He said it back in 68 or whatever. But he's like, I never heard this until something like 2012. So, Bo, if, if you do something and somebody comes up to you and goes, do you think it's about this much larger, more important thing that this song or essay you wrote would tie in beautifully? Are you saying no? No, you'd be like, yep, I did that. Anything for totally the what I meant to do. Somebody left a really large wad of cash in one of the baskets. I knew mm-hmm. it was you. That's right. That's right. You guys enjoy it. Enjoy it. You're not going to say no. <laughs> Right? Because I know what Paul McCartney's writing songs about whatever he woke up and had for breakfast that day. Right? Yes. 
He's like, mm, what? I'm going to write a song about my sheepdog. Literally writes a song about a sheepdog, right? Yes. What are you going to do? Uh, I heard a funny phrase called Obla D. But listen, Obla D, Obla Da. Uh, I'll write a whole song called that. Maybe it'll come. Yeah. Yes. He, it, I, I, I don't know if it was that intentional. But yeah. if I listen to it and I go, oh, yeah, that's Blackbird's a great song. That's not good for your cover <laughs> version because you didn't take it anywhere, right? Right. Like, I, I'm not huge on covers just because I think a lot of the time, and, and by, if you want to play a cover at a concert, that's great. But if you're doing it for an album, you better take it someplace it's never been, move it to a different sort of level of either, I guess, production or interpretation. Yeah, I don't I don't generally get them. And that was one of the actual like sort of warning signs for me about this album. When I saw two covers, I was like, oh, two covers. That's not two covers is not a good indicator that you knew what you were doing or that you were super focused. Well, for one, I wish that we were still in the era of currents, covers of contemporary music. Like I do love the idea of basically man you i hit the joint you hit the joint right does everybody pass it around like i i I, right. I i dig that right like some people blow rain some people take smoke up their nose like it's just very interesting to see the different ways that people do things but i agree with you especially getting to this point where those were low-hanging fruit covers right like black they were very obvious except with jolene not okay so it starts with dolly parton explaining it which seemed to be a bit also gotta say I understand that y'all love Dolly now. And by y'all are specifically talking about black women for whatever reason she has become the white lady that y'all want to be friends with. I'm telling you, I don't know where all the Carfax go. They go to some great places. She loves to help kids read. Just be careful with that one. But anyway, I don't want to hear that white lady talk about nobody good hair. Y'all ain't, that's, that's, that's not allowed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't believe that Beyonce let <laughs> that know, slide. You're- you're, you're not saying Beyonce has the, the like, Beyonce can't give the pass there. No, 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 no. You can't be like, yo, Dolly, say something about that one girl with the good. No, no, no. I don't even know. I don't even know Dolly understand what the hell you just walked her into. But anyway, Jolene is an American classic, right? Like, I think it's one yeah. of those. We could go so far as to say a standard. It's been covered enough that we could go and call it a standard. No one ever one time got up and said, that what Jolene needed was a rewrite. Nobody has been arrogant enough to believe that what we needed to do with Jolene is not just to rewrite it, but to rewrite it in such a way that takes out everything that makes it interesting. Because the thing that makes Jolene interesting is vulnerability. Yes. And fear. Yes. That's the thing that makes it like it's 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 she's begging. And that's and and this is this is Dolly Parton begging, who of course. And everyone on the internet has already done this, but you go, who's making you, you're why are, who's making you beg? You seen Dolly right. Parton in 1971, right? Right. That is that that is one of my childhood icons of, of like femininity. And and you're threatened. This says so many terrible, awful, moving things about human existence all at once. And it takes that out of it. Which is, I think, when you go, what club do you not have in your bag? Right. That is one thing that I don't necessarily think Beyonce had in her bag this album. She's had it before. That's what I was about to say. This album, she ain't doing it no more. And if you're not going to do it no more, it's like somebody told me about the the Good Times travesty going on on the internet. Like, you might have been able to get away with this. You just didn't need to call it Good Times. Like, if you were going to do right. this, but turn it into Jolene, I'm going to make that whole lean. It's not really like, that's not... <laughs> That's that's, not, that, that's what she that's what she gave us. Jolene, hope please. That's basically what she said. This is not that's not that's not what that song is. I guess that's just what the whole like if you were gonna do it, you that's what what a bizarre that's what I'm saying. This is such a strange decision. It, it's it's a little bit like for for me, it, it would be like doing Saving Private Ryan as a story about how you were built different and you wouldn't be scared. You know, like that's mm-hmm. it. Like, sorry to these men. But I wouldn't have been scared of all of this. And I just would have shot those Nazis. It's not, I think, the most. It, it, it takes the existing framework of the song. It doesn't do much with it other than, other than, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm built much different. It would have beat your ass. That's, And it's not even funny. Because there is, by the way, a parody version of this. You can go online and find a parody version of this. A woman, I cannot remember. And I'm very sorry to this TikTok rapper. But a, a woman who is talking about, I would have shot Jolene. And it's hilarious. Yes. It is hilarious. <laughs> and it is produced over a $5 beat. Okay. By the way, I will say this about this cover of Jolene. The second half of this, the arrangement is phenomenal. Like it is, it's phenomenal. It sounds great. It, it's awesome. It's like a lot of things in this record where you go, this sounds beautiful and it's so well executed. And I don't care as much about it as I should. But this is a place where I feel like her 
fame is a problem for her, which is we know too much about her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So her singing Jolene, now all of a sudden we out here wondering if it's back to like it was back when she was dragging his ass around and making and singing X Factor in front of 10,000 people, <laughs> in front of 75,000 people a night. He just had to take that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, are we back? Are we going there again? I know what Jay was thinking. He's like, oh, full house. That's a good. Those are good receipts. Can't wait to see those receipts. Money's great. I think a lot of Jay's thoughts end with like, ah, money's good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But good. that's the issue. But that's the issue, right? Like, I do wonder if there's a range of stuff that she can't do just because she knows that we going to think of it in a different way. Yeah. Are you trapped by, are you trapped by the, the character that your public persona has? They become? branded that marriage so strong. Yeah. Yeah. And if you come across and say anything other than this marriage is strong, then all of a sudden you're making problems for yourself that that exist well beyond the record. And correct. I don't. Yeah, I don't think she wants that. So what would have been the better decision is just to bypass it already. There are tons of Dolly Parton songs you could have covered that are less popular. Right. There are. By the way, if you want to go covers, if you want to go interesting people that she could have covered, you know, I don't know. Get a Martina McBride cover in there. OK, get a Patty Loveless cover. Right. Get get something where you go. Okay, I'm, and by the way, that would have been a political statement because you're taking, okay, here's this like, like I'm not just going to, I'm going to take songs from the past that I didn't think were recognized within the canon of country music enough and raise them to the level of Beyonce rather than taking this gigantic obvious song and then not really doing a whole lot with it. But, but we're, we're getting real theoretical about this. My thing is this, would you go back and replay it? I wouldn't like, like, I've, like, I think I've, I listened to it once and I was like, yeah, that's enough. I'm not going to replay yeah. that. I've replayed. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Cause that's the thing. I, I need got to clean my, <laughs> I got to clean my kitchen. Songs. Yeah. I, I got to clean my kitchen. If you put on Yaya, yeah, that kitchen's getting clean. Yeah. I got like, I got other stuff that I'll run on here. And I think that's the thing. It has good songs. Right. And she's yeah. at the place where this is my own personal thing. Right. I want to hear her. I don't need all this other stuff, right? Like, they, they feel so big at points. Like, even a song I like, like 16 Carriages, but then that, that giant whop snare that comes in every time and they that raises everything to make it epic. Yeah. And I'm at a point with Beyonce where I want to bring it down and I want her to pull us in real close. And that's kind of where the Miley Cyrus song kind of goes in a way in Bodyguard also is that it gets a little closer and it's not nearly as big and you don't have nearly as many tracks playing back there. And she's gotten so good at selling how she feels. And it's right there. And we don't need to dress it up in everything else that comes around and all those sorts of affectations. And so what I feel like we got is, in a lot of ways, a lot of really good songs. And these engineers, man, I bet they going around, they other engineer friends, they, they, they just whip it out when they, pull, when they play this. They like, listen to my work. But it then can feel sometimes like she went to Academy and got a brand new pair of Wranglers and a brand new shirt and some brand new boots and ain't got no dirt in none of it. And I would like, I would like to hear her do a record that just feel like Renaissance had some dirt on it. It was very pristine, but you still kind of felt the dirt on it. I want some mm -hmm. little more dirt on this. Do you know where she does that? There's a song on here where she does that. And it's a murder ballad. There is a straight up murder ballad on here. Daughter. And yeah. she does that. It is unadorned. It is confident, but it does not try super hard. It's Beyonce telling you about killing someone and doing it cold. And it's great. It's it's one. It's it. I think it might be my favorite song on the record. Oh, it has to rip the dress off in the bruises. Yeah, yeah. That I accidentally uh, started playing. <laughs> yeah, that you accidentally. You're like, this one? Yes. We can do a listening party. I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> the lawyer's your show, sadly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we have the money to do that, but yeah, the um, it, but daughter is daughter is to me what is the best execution of certain concepts because, um, because it is confident and doesn't doesn't overdo it, doesn't try, right? I think Bodyguard has that same thing because you have that rhythm section, that Fleetwood Mac style rhythm section where you're just like, oh yeah, we're gonna put on a nice sweater and pretend we're in Laurel Canyon, yes. right? And I'll sing something that doesn't try real hard. There's a yeah. lot. Beyonce, by the way, if it is, it is again another backhanded compliment. When you go, my my greatest complaint about her is that I think she tries too hard on some of this stuff, and she doesn't need to because she's got the tools to do it and the and you know the confidence. I don't 
and daughter, she totally has that. It's one of those things where I was delighted because it was a, it was a genre and a fit that I didn't think would be there. And you go, oh no, she's real good about is singing about killing somebody. Yeah, <laughs> is, and that's she's, a. That should scare her husband to death. It's kind of like the part in the in the lemonade video when she rolled at the moment that I realized the shit was off the rails in the lemonade video is when she in the yellow dress with the baseball bat. And I was like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, she oh, she's she are they oh, whoa, what just happened uh-huh. here? By the way, she has Simon Martinson on guitar there. It's one of the credits, or at least on production there. So mm-hmm. I suspect it's guitar. Simon Martinson is uh, a Scandinavian musician. If you want a good song about killing somebody, uh, <laughs> you, you just got to get somebody from Scandinavia with a guitar. They're real good at th- yeah. singing about that. And it's got some, like, that's some sweeping descriptive songwriting right there. Like, every, like, the details are named. I don't go to church, so I don't really know all that Italian. Um, but yeah. So one thing that they I know about the production of this album, they listen to Westerns when or they watch Westerns when they were trying to do this. That sounds like a Western, right? It sounds because one thing you're going to do is you got to let a little like that's another thing is you got to let a little bit of the vulnerability and you got to let a little bit of the like uncertainty and irony. in if you're going to do country, it's a hard trick. It's a hard trick because it has to be very measured. Like George Strait. George Strait is amazing at doing things like. Like coming out saying, I don't love you and I don't need you, you know, I, you mm-hmm. know, I, that's a fact. And you know, it's a lie. The minute he says it, right. You go, I'm waiting for the turn, right. I got oceanfront property in Arizona, you know, if you'll buy that, like that's, and I think that's something that like, if that's what we were aiming for here again, that's one thing that, that I don't think was necessarily in the bag here. And that's not just Beyonce. I think that's on the part of the producers and things too. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, it's very clean. It's a very clean sounding record. And it's almost like where your budget can get you in trouble and the time can get you in trouble because you can get everything down to a level of perfection. And then, you know, you get to where it is. And I always worry when I talk about this because I just find, I find the construction of things so interesting. And I find talking about music so interesting that I don't ever want to get to the point though, where it's divorced from the ways that it makes people feel. And Beyonce has gotten really good at the idea that, look, you don't sell products, you sell stories. And so there's been a story that's been sold about around mm-hmm. all of these records. And the story that was sold around this one was the, I didn't feel good at the CMAs part and then learning about the music and everything else. And the album is disconnected from the story that was sold. Like to me, they don't, they don't add, they don't come together, but Beyonce has reached a point. If you've been to any of these last tours, especially the last one, you realize what she mean to them people is so much different and whatever, like it's, it's not, I don't even know how to explain, describe or whatever it is, but she make them people feel better about themselves. And so I can talk about this in these objective terms while also recognizing for a lot of people who listen to it, that ain't really got nothing to do with the here and now. Right. Like they're not, yeah. they're not there. They don't care that this is, I think uh, my man, Chris Richards in the Washington post, who wrote an excellent review of this. Even if you don't agree, you'd have to agree that this is like a fantastic piece of music criticism. But man, she out here begging for the album of the year. That makes me sad, right? Like I feel like I feel like this is asking for white acceptance in a way that she has never done before, and it does make me sad. I can't speak to that. What I can speak to is this: I grew up there. I grew up there, and grew up next to some of the musicians who played on these records, like next door, like Emmy Lou Harris's bass player at one point lived across the street from me. Like this is Nashville. Music wise, if you want to look for who's going to produce a great album, you don't start there. You don't. They're going to produce factory stuff and they have always produced factory stuff. And sometimes factory stuff cranks out great stuff. But like most big industrial concerns, which country music is its own sort of cultural industrial concern, if they make something good, it's an accident. And if you want to make something good in country, you generally, in order to break new ground, you don't do it in Nashville. Right. You do you do it like some weird guy out of Kentucky for Sturgill. Okay. You do it uh like Willie. Willie gave up on Nashville. Remember, the reason yep. Willie Nelson is famous is because he was washed up at 40. At 40. <laughs> and he moved to Austin and gave up. And then he made shotgun Willie and completely reinvented his persona. If you want new country music, a new ground in country music, you have to go to places like Bakersfield, California, where the Bakersfield sound with Merle Haggard and Buck Owens really changed the way people you know thought about writing songs the way it sounded um all of that it never started with nashville so the idea of aiming at nashville as a target um is not just it, you know you you say it's sad i i'd say it's misbegotten it's it's yeah. not you're missing the point there if you want to do something interesting in country 
you generally have to come from the outside in. Those people, they'll never like you. They'll never right. approve. Well, that was the, that was the thing. I don't think she got you and I talked about it. <laughs> they 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 dislike a lot of people, boo. It ain't just you. It ain't just you. It ain't just us. They dislike their own. So just to give you, can I, let's take everybody full circle and talk about acceptance in Nashville. You're going to give her the Alan Jackson? Yeah. So at CMAs, they asked Alan Jackson one year to play to a backing track and to lip sync. And he said no. And he got in this big tussle and he came out and he did, um, I, I think it may have been summertime blues. Anyway, you can see the drummer doesn't have sticks in his hand because as a protest, they made him, they, they were like, go out there and play without sticks. This is dumb. So I played with the backing track and Alan Jackson did live vocals and he hated it, but he kind of rubbed it in the CMA's face anyway, because at the time nobody was moving units like Alan Jackson. So he could do that. Alan Jackson is one of the people who also walked out when the Dixie Chicks and Beyonce came up on stage. Right. So even the people who are rebelling uh, against the sort of strictures of Nashville, or at least, uh, you know, feigning it, being theatrical about it, they wouldn't accept this. Yeah, like this is, they're weird. Didn't Sturge would play outside the CMAs one year? <laughs> yeah. He played, he played outside because he's never getting in. It's never like, you don't understand it, man. Like, if you don't go to this church and you don't use this producer and you don't use these songwriters, it ain't happening. It's a, it's a company. It's a business. And don't beg for a company's money and certainly don't beg for their affection because it's never coming your way. And look, maybe this is going to get that Grammy album of the year. I can't imagine caring about that, man. Like, this people that don't mm -hmm. got album of the year is a lot stronger than the list of people that do, no matter what anybody tells you. But in the end, hey, man, she's not going to make a bad one. But I think I said something last week that bounced around where we had put together the clip, obviously. But I was just like, look, man, this has a chance to not be good. And that's the most admirable thing about this record. And I think the part that disappointed me once I got it was it didn't have a chance to not be good because it didn't swing. Like there was, they didn't stand. Just, I thought there would be some bigger swings, and the biggest swing was what if we reimagine perfection? That was the biggest yeah. swing that they took. It's like let's reimagine perfection, and I'm kind of like, huh, I don't know. But at the same time, the fact that Desert Eagle fits on the same record as they, in between Riverdance and Yaya, like. There are some moments where some things come together, right? And that yeah. little genres are a funny thing. Little, like, oh, no, I didn't need that. I didn't need you to tell me nothing. I don't need you to explain the thing. I need you to do the thing. Just yes. do the thing. Just get get to it. And there's an interesting, like, there's another interesting thing here, which is this, that that I think that that she does hit a stride on the second half of the album where she's doing something really interesting that sort of does what I think a lot of the things that she was trying to do. It just can't be sustained for whatever reason they ran out of time. I also think there's this, that if you're talking about doing an album and you get to 27 tracks, let me reiterate, <laughs> get your inner editor out. Okay. <laughs> she's so successful and she's so good at what she does and made a bunch of good stuff, right? Like if you listen to them individually, you're like, oh, that's pretty good. You put it all together and go, you need an editor. Yeah. Who's going to tell you no, right? right? Like who's, you saw the first name on the back of that record. First name on the back of that record. The only name on the back of that record mm -hmm. is, is Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, but by the way, sh sh shouts out to just doing it. D just like, doing like, it. Like, just, just doing it. You went out there, you did it. You know, some of it's awesome. Some of it's not. It's big. It's yeah, big. it's huge. And that's, you know me, that's my, I want to get out the Michael Jackson lane because you start becoming imprisoned by the largesse. You start getting imprisoned by how big it is. You start getting imprisoned by, I have to, like, I'm getting the best of the best at everything. And, you know, and it just gets, perfection becomes the enemy of good in a lot of ways. And then it stops feeling. And then the pressure of it and the weight and everything gets to be big. But I have two questions that I will leave us with are just things for us to ponder, which is number one, Take a track like Desert Eagle. Was there any discussion about whether this was a Renaissance track or whether or not this was a uh, Cowboy Carter track? Which is interesting because they do. There are a couple of moments here that sound like they could go in either direction, which is kind of fascinating to think of. Um, and number two, as we think about like which goes in those directions, what did they make that didn't see the light of day? Like I would love to know what the stuff sounded like that they decided to scrap or like what the stuff sounded like that may have been the country album before somebody was like, Hey, saying it, saying it. Yeah, no, there have to be, if they did this much, then there's more. And the outtakes, the outtakes might be a lot more interesting. 
than I think they would be, right? Because you think like, oh, they'd be awkward and awful. No, they might they might be things that they might be things that end up being like, oh, you should have put that on the record. And I always anytime somebody's like, oh man, no, we had other stuff, but we just didn't think it fit on the record. I'm always like Silver Springs. Silver, Silver Spring. Springs. <laughs> Silver Springs. They just they just Which what? by the way, doesn't fit on the record at all. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. and, for, and for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Fleetwood Mac did an album called Rumors that sold 80 zillion million copies. All it's really, really good. And the best song is not on it. The best song is this track called Silver Spring that uh, is a B-side to one of them. And you can find a performance from the year 2000, a crazy ass Stevie Nicks, still deep. It is crazy girl magic. That whole song. And by the way, mm-hmm. I, I, well, I'll talk about that later. But that song is 100% crazy girl magic. It is fantastic. And it's not on the album. It's, it's just right there hanging on the side. Just mm-hmm. Speaking waiting. of songs that Beyonce could not cover without inviting extracurricular comparisons that would tax yes. her emotionally can't do it. personally do not can't do no, it can't that do it. that's what makes the x factor on tour so funny she knew exactly what she was doing and she was just <laughs> sticking his face in it the whole way she knew the whole time what it was but speaking of that we talk about bodyguard having uh the fleetwood mac element that is everything from top to bottom her vocals her vocals are such a stevie nicks pastiche like that mm-hmm. would have been one if she now she had told me that she had got stevie nicks to sing that song with her now we'd have been talking about something different that would have 100 percent fit yeah, then we're doing a Laurel Canyon album, which I'm fine with. If you want to do that, if you want, hey, again, let's let's crack out the sweaters and the herbal tea. Yeah. Let's you know do a little the, yoga and we'll do a Laurel Canyon album. Man, Beyonce on that one when she hit the honey, honey. I'm like, oh, tell me more. Like, don't <laughs> so, if you could just, if, just, if you could if you could talk to me like that, who, buddy, you might there might be a purse in it for you. Probably it's not so warm, but it might. Yeah, it's so warm and it's so cozy. Love it. See, again, <laughs> like, like we're sitting here, we just talked for an hour about what a mess this album was. And yet in the middle of it, you're like, yeah, on a, on a cold night, I put that on. Moments. It's got moments. Like that's, it's got moments. And this is This happens, though, with great artists where even the ones where you're like, I don't know what's going on here. We're not pretending like it don't have moments, right? But once you decide, once, once she got to that sp- space of such precision and execution on these grand concepts... For me, it's like, oh, damn, almost, almost. And I just wanted mm-hmm. a little more ambition. That's all I wanted because she's never been a person to truly try to expand the form, but at least it could slap. I just want a little, just a little more, a little more slap. Uh, you know, hey, you know what's not on this record? Like, like not on this record. And I think like really could have been. If you want to talk about a, a, a cover, like if just I don't plant your flag. Go ahead. 90s country. Do a neon moon. Right? Why don't you go out there and do a boot scooting song, like a proper yes. boot scooting song? Like you want to give directions? America wants Beyonce to give directions. That's it. <laughs> okay, nothing better like a, like a line dance boot scooting song. Um, you know, like the last thing I will say is this: I, I don't particularly like it that much, but but live sixteen carriages is going to slap because um, I know it's designed for lighting cues. Like it's designed for lighting and stage cues. Right? There'll be a fan yeah. blowing, and I'll be like, oh, she's done it again. I don't know if you've ever seen Beyonce live, but once the fan starts blowing and she's at the edge of the stage, oh, that's she's got all the bring, dancers behind her. Always, that's going to bring them to tears in concert. And by them, I'm talking about your boy. That's yeah, that's me. the one. That's yeah, the one. No, that's going to be like, like we're being real. We're being real cool here. We're like, I don't know if I feel that song. She's going to play that live. And I'll be like, she's. No oh yeah, no, I told you that one. That one went for me. That video with her staring in the mirror and just looking all kind of contemplative and unhappy. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I really saw that. Watched that video. Was like. I feel like we need to check in on Beyonce. Like, are we? Are we? <laughs> I never thought we, I'd say that, but yeah, are we sure that everything? Check on Beyonce? Like, I've just come away from like after I saw that in these last days, I've just come away being like, you know, I just really don't know if she's happy right now, and I don't give a yeah. damn about Beyonce. I don't care, but, <laughs> but I really don't know if she's happy right now. Oh uh, yeah, th- this is again. Thank, thank you for thank you for letting us talk about this uh, because there's obviously like a thousand different ways it could go, yes. particularly because this is such a like this is such a pivotal fault line in music, right? Because the only two genres that really sort of move move weight right now are basically country and rap, and she tried to put the two of them in together in a way yes. that like I think it, it's almost like I, I think there are ways that people have done this that are that are done better. But this is the most visible one. It's a big ticket one. And it's one that I think, I hope it's one of those albums that somebody goes, I heard that and I did this. And you listen to that thing and go, oh, this is, this is better. This is incredible. Yeah. Last thing. How long do you think it was before Cowboy Troy gave up? 
and realized that Beyonce wasn't calling him to lay down a fire <laughs> 16. I think there's probably a few people on here Florida, who wouldn't Florida admit to Georgia it lied. either. Florida Georgia yeah. lied. Hootie. H- Hootie, yeah. H- Hootie was probably like, I got a phone. It <laughs> rings. Look, Hootie might be like me. I ain't got no shame at this point. I call people. Yeah. Hey, I heard you working on this. Holla at me. I know he's in Nashville. Give him, give him a call. Right? Yeah. Oh, so he ain't doing nothing right now, right? He a little. He uh, got free time, I, don't he? I think he's got a little free time. Yeah. So you know, could 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 have called him. You know. Although I, I, I will tell you too, I saw the funniest thing I've seen about this album was this that that somebody said that um, by the description of the red haired hussy in the song and the people involved, I think we all know who they're referring to in Jolene, and that is noted hussy Willie Nelson, which yes. accurate, accurate. Yes. Yes. By the way, last thing. The person I do wish you would have called. And I try to be careful about this. I talked about it before. Not to criticize somebody because they didn't make the album that I would have wanted them to make. Right. And at the expense of the album they made. But Al Green was the person to call. There, there absolutely should have been Al Green jam on here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is Al, is Al in that business, by the way? Or is Al, is Al, is Al like, does God want me on that record? I'm not oh, no, quite Al sure will do it. His- Al will, do, I will it. do it. Okay. Although she is a little, she is a little raunchy for Al. Like now, now, now that we mentioned this, she do kind of like, told you, soft, soft, soft kiss on some fat lips. Yeah, it might be. We might be up too late for Al <laughs> at that point in the record. <laughs> nope, he's over there hanging out. Well, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, speaking of speaking of people who are too weird to ever get in the CMAs. Lyle Lovett. <laughs> I can only, only thing- imagine how, how Lyle Lovett felt the one time he rolled up in there with Julia Roberts, like, yeah, holla at your boy. <laughs> say that's, that's something sh- now. That should say a lot about the CMAs. That, like, the only way that Lyle Lovett gets in there consistently is like, you know, he was married to Julia Roberts once. He used to let him in. <laughs> he used to be married to somebody famous. Lyle Lovett's famous. <laughs> yeah, but he's not Julia Roberts. I can, listen, you want you want to talk about Nashville and celerity, buddy? You close this file, open another one. Got a whole ninety minutes on that, brother. <laughs> that is Spencer Hall. Check him out on Channel Six. Check him out on uh, Big Dumb Football, available on YouTube, where I occasionally drop in. My man, this has been an outright privilege and pleasure. I appreciate you. Likewise, thank you. Yeehaw. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. We do this three times a week. Sean, you handling everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Remember, follow The Right Time. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. And we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. (laughs) 